Welcome to the No Name Brand Podcast. My name is Sashka Hanarapal, actress, singer, dancer, turned brand marketing sales and advertising strategist who brands your soul. And each week I bring you an inspiring person or message to help you discover your undergod. Turn up your leadership notches, challenge the status quo, because you're fast and furious with a powerful message to share with the world. Thank you for taking time out with me today. And without further ado, let's get our creative and wisdom juices below. Hello, hello, hello. It's me again. It's Nashka. And I am back with another solo episode. I'm enjoying these solo episodes. Um, I get asked a lot of questions and my team have given me some really cool ideas to speak about as well and just training as well, because I find personally that it's not always just lectures that you have to listen to, but even when you're listening to someone in a conversation, like myself talking to myself, pretending that you are in front of me and I'm talking to you, ha 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 ha, but even in the situation where you're listening to somebody, you start having epiphanies. And for myself, when I have these epiphanies, I'm like writing down because there's a lot of creative ideas within them doesn't necessarily mean I have to implement them immediately, but they definitely lead from one thought to another thought to another thought that creates something. And that's my speciality is creating something from nothing. I love that. And today we're going to be talking about why you're attracting the wrong clients. Now let's first just, uh, if you haven't done my free five-day training, which is a breakthrough business plan training, I speak about your audience in this training as well. And there's a workbook and a worksheet with it where you go into your non-negotiables. Now, you may be in the process at the moment where you're already in your business and you've done a gazillion avatars and the traditional marketing terms is, you know, you narrow down who your target audience is, who your target market is. You've done the demographics and the psychographics and you've really you think you've nailed it, like you've done the homework, you've sat down and it's a, two, it's a woman, 2.75 kids that has an average income, blah, 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 and all that information that you gather about your target audience. And still, you'll get on a call with somebody and or you meet someone at a networking event and it's like you keep attracting this person that just is wrong for you. They trigger you. They make you feel small. They make you doubt your belief in what you do and why you do it and for whom you do it. And that doubt, ooh, I tell you what, that doubt, it's a creepy thing. It creeps up on you and then steals everything, steals everything. But in a good way, it's also a good thing because it helps you really get really, really get clear on who it is that you want to serve, why you're serving them and on purpose. In my solo episode that I spoke of before in episode 113 is the belief within yourself. And doubt is a horrible thing, really is horrible. It really pulls you down into the abyss where you really doubt who you are, why you're doing things, and which is why it's so much more important to get out of that phase to believe in yourself and to be the leader that you were born to be. Now, we hear today why you're not attracting or why you're attracting the wrong clients. And I've had this. We all have had this. I mean, it's not like, oh, I'm sitting here and I've never, ever attracted a wrong client. I've attracted many, many frogs, many frogs. And out of them, I've learned. I've persisted through. And even if the client wasn't right for me, I would always finish a project. And even if I felt that I couldn't feel finish the project, we both came to an amicable decision on how we would end the project with measurable results so we could still both move forward amicably rather than as enemies or in a fight or something. I don't like that. I don't like ending anything in a horrible fight. Sometimes things just end and I have no idea why and I don't have an answer, but I don't, from my perspective, I don't like just leaving things hanging. So yes, I've also had wrong clients. Now I have my non-negotiables and I've written down seven things that I'd just like to touch on, on why 
you're attracting the wrong clients. And I'm sure that you know these things, but maybe you don't. Maybe you need to be reminded. So when I'm speaking about the things, jot them down, write down reasons why these things are still coming up. Is there still a pattern that you keep going over and over through? Is it when you're attracting wrong clients, is it also that has to do with something that is prevalent in your life that you can see the same pattern that you do within your money patterns, within your relationships, within friends and family or or siblings or parents or whatever it is. Find that pattern because you can't get to the next level without resolving that problem. So one of the reasons why you're attracting the wrong clients is definitely, you know, where your focus is and that influences also your energy. Now There's a saying that where your focus goes, your energy goes. And I saw such a great video about this um, from Dandapani. He made a video. It was all just black and they just shone a light. So you just basically see this light in the dark moving around. And as your eyes follow that light, and that's the same thing. So that light is your energy and where you focus on that's where your energy and focus is going to go. So if that light happens to be lack of money, bills to pay, stress, arguments, feeling not enough, unworthy, whatever that light is, the more you focus on it, the more you're going to be attracting it and the brighter it's going to become and the bigger it's going to become. And it's going to kind of like you're going to obsess about it. And that is also what you're going to be attracting. So if you're always thinking, oh my God, I need to pay the rent. I need to pay. I need to get things coming in. Otherwise I can't do this. Otherwise I can't do that. That's all you focus on. And that's all you can talk about. And that's all you are basically. But when you shift the focus to being grateful, for example, just small steps. And I know that this is difficult and it is a habit that you have to instill within yourself to move past it. It's not going to change in one day. It's not going to change in an hour. You need to do this over and over and over again. And that is focusing on that energy that is going to empower you rather than disempower you. So yes, we have to pay the rent. We have to pay the bills. Go one step before that. So who am I before that? What can I be grateful for before that? All right. I have my brains, I have my education, I have my knowledge, I have my tenacity. Do you see where this is going? Like I'm feeling the positivity and I'm moving away from the lack, although you can get sucked in there very quickly. And life will chuck you more lessons. They will chuck you more obstacles and more stumbling blocks that you think, oh my God, I'm drowning. But you are never given a lesson or a task that is beyond your capacity to learn and conquer. Never. All right. And remember in episode 113, I also said it's important to keep people, your community, and support around you that are going to help you rise irrespective of what you're going through. So, number one, why you're attracting wrong clients is that you're focusing on and your energy is driven towards negative, lack, not enough low self-esteem, low confidence, not believing in yourself. And that is what you're going to attract as well, those type of clients. Okay. The second thing is your heart isn't in it. When your heart isn't in something and it doesn't make your heart sing, which where everything's just a process, it's just mechanical. It's just, you know, I have to do this to survive, which links in with the first thing with your focus and your energy. When your heart isn't in anything, you're dead. It's like, living, you're a zombie. Your body's walking, but there's, it's not rosy cheeks. You don't have the joy and the happiness and the excitement. And you have to get back to that space. You have to know that your heart is in what you are selling, why you're selling it, for whom you're selling it, and why you're doing everything isn't because you need to pay college funds and pay the bills. That's not the reason why you are doing why you're doing what you're doing. So find that reason and focus on it and let your energy absorb that focus because then you'll start attracting, in inverted commas, the right clients for yourself. 
One of the third things is also we get so fixated or we taught. It's like in school. You're just conditioned to learn things and then you implement them, but they don't, they don't always work for you. And I always say that marketing are empty vessels and it's only when you fill it with yourself and who you are and your purpose, your life purpose, then it only comes to life. So you can fill that empty vessel of a, inverted commas, avatar, target audience with demographics and psychographics. But if you really don't know to the core, which is what I do on my brand building retreats and my mastermind, is really knowing your life purpose, which is not your profession, it's your life purpose. If you don't know that, there is very little leeway for yourself to move forward because you're so fixated on the mechanics of an avatar that you don't see the relationships that are there to be built, the no-like trust process that is there to be built. And it's easier when you're building a relationship, no-like trust relationship and, and in business and with clients that you really love, that you meant for each other, that you really, really meant for each other. It's like when you walk into a room or you're at a networking event or an event or a birthday party or whatever, and a Tupperware party, and you meet someone for the first time, it's like, oh my God. This person and I, we just clicked. It's like we've known each other forever. That is what a right client is. That's who your soul group is. You just you meant for each other. And not having this and not being in this space, it won't make your heart sing. And your energy will be somewhere else and your focus will be something else and inevitably attracting them the wrong clients. Now, the fourth and the fifth thing, they strongly linked to one another. And it has more to do with your business as opposed to your, what is it, more your, your spiritual, more the energy. It's more the reality of the mechanics of running your business. And that is your branding and your messaging. Man, I cannot tell you how often I read messages or promotional posts or I find flyers or you, know, you sent information or you look at someone's written up about something in a magazine about a product or a service and then you go and look it up and you're going because it was written up so amazing and you're just like oh my god I have to have this this is so amazing and then you go look them up on the online space on their website or social media wherever you redirect it to and you go what the hell like this that I've read and this that is being advertised these two things just don't correlate with one another which then inevitably if your branding and your messaging is sending out the wrong message and you're not aligned with one another, you're going to be attracting the wrong people too because you're putting yourself out there with a false pretense. And false pretense, focus and energy is going to attract wrong clients with false pretenses or they're just inquiring about your costs and they, they don't want to, how many hours do you charge for? And they don't look at the quality and the value that you're actually delivering. And you don't even have to mention the quality and value because when you click with one another, it's just like, yeah, take my money, whatever. So those two things are very, very strongly linked with one another. Another thing is I see often attracting the wrong clients. It's like you have to focus on one platform, be it a magazine, print, events, networking, social media social media being one platform, Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or YouTube or Pinterest or Snapchat or whatever, or podcasting. What's very important to know is that your clients are everywhere. They are everywhere. Some will be on Instagram, some will be on Facebook, some will be at an event just by accident. Some will be in a bookstore and they happen to pick up a magazine that you happen to be in just by chance. Your clients are everywhere. It's your responsibility when you don't attract the wrong clients just by being on the wrong platform. You cannot be on the wrong platform. It's the messaging that you're putting out, the branding, the energy, the focus, and knowing who your soul group is, speaking to that person on the platform. And the platform is, as well as I mentioned before, an empty vessel that gets filled with your information. And if you're not filled with that information, then obviously you're going to be attracting the wrong clients. I think you know where you're going. I think you know where I'm going with this, right? Right? And the last thing, and I probably harp on this too much, but it's important. It's really important. 
you attract the wrong clients to when you're in the space of desperateness and the space of fear and lack. And when you're in doubt, you don't believe in yourself. And I, when you don't believe in yourself, man, you're just going to attract. I love comparing it. Like, you know, when you're sitting down and your energy is so you're depressed, you're not in a good space. And it's like you attract everything, mosquitoes, flies. If you don't like cats, the cats come to you. If you don't like dogs, the dogs are with you. You just attract everything because that energy is, it's like pulls you down, 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 down. But when you believe in yourself and your energy is so much different, you're in control. The situation isn't in control of you. You're the one that's in control where you telling your energy, hey, I'm the one that's managing this. I'm the one that's attracting. My energy is focused. I believe in myself. That even when flies are flying around you and mosquitoes, it's literally you can talk to them and tell them, hey, bugger off. This is my space. Go find, your, go find another space. I don't need you here. And I've literally done that because <laughs> when it's been really summer, and when it's been really summer, when it's been summer and really hot, and there are a lot of flies around, and my energy was a little bit low, there would be flies buzzing around me where I'd be like, no, no shit, hell no. Where I just, I'd realize and I'd go, oh, I had to change the focus over here. And because the flies, the bees, the wasps, all these creepy, crawly things, they're attracted to our energy. And if your energy is down pulling, they're going to be attracted to that. So when I change my energy, the flies just disappear. The mozzies just disappear. It's really, really interesting. It always reminds me that I'm the one in control. And the only reason why I attract wrong clients, one, is to learn a lesson not to work with those clients because it may be a new niche or market that I've gone into and trying something new where I'm like, nah, and I always try something three times. So after the third time, it really hasn't worked. I'm just like, nah, I'm not going in this direction. And two, the seven things that I've gone through, why you're attracting the wrong clients. So that's my exciting um, rants and talking today. I'd love to hear why you believe you've attracted the wrong clients or are still attracting the wrong clients. Maybe this has helped you, given you epiphanies. As I said in the beginning, going through the stuff that I've mentioned, the seven points, if things come up where you're like, oh, you know, my focus and energy, and there's a stifling feeling within you, confront it, take control of it, write down 25 reasons. Why are you feeling like this? Why are you feeling desperate? Get it out of you. Don't keep it within you. Don't swallow it. Don't push it down. Get it out of you. Journal it. Write it down on a piece of paper, on a board, whatever, then burn it. Who cares? But just get it out of you so you're not stifling your energy and creativity with things that, that are just made up stories within your mind. Okay. For me, it was always in the beginning, when I started my business, I was like, oh my God, I have to make money because if I don't make money, then I won't be able to pay the rent. And if I can't pay the rent, I'm going to land up on the street and I don't know how my kids are going to survive. And I made up these stories that just went on and on and on. And I'm going to be homeless and I'm not going to be credible. I'm going to be a failure. And these were stories that were passed down to me from generation to generation to generation to generation. And they were things where I was like, oh, hang on a moment. These are just stories in my mind. They're not even real. They're literally not even real. I've just made up these stories to make myself believe that if I don't pay the rent, this is going to happen. But if I don't pay the rent, maybe something else comes out of it. Maybe I can create a different situation. Maybe I can create a relationship with my bank or with the owner or with the landlord where we strike up a conversation. Maybe they have different clients for me. Maybe we can help each other. There's so many different possibilities that come from thinking differently as opposed to pulling yourself down with negative energy. So that's me, folks. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and your epiphanies and feedback. And remember, as always, to go forward fast and furious and to be the change that you want to see and be in the world and do it with creativity, wisdom, passion, imagination, and humor. Love you all and see you again next week. Love you, Bye. Dang, 
there was just super califragilistic expialidocious. I enjoyed having you on board and please do me and you a favor. Head on over to iTunes, SoundCloud or Stitcher. Click subscribe and a super bonus. Leave your review and you stand a chance of being announced and advertised on the show. I'm always striving to ensure that your brand is uplifted and empowered. Remember, done is better than perfect. So be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and send in your feedback too. You're the absolute best. Keep rocking.